Welcome Dragon Champions to another Dragon Blog Gaming Presents Dragon Champions video. This is part two of our tier list that we've been talking about. We talked uh, yesterday about tier one, what constitutes tier one. We talked about Nidiel, Kara, Solius, Freezar, Trumgard, Wonder Lula, Patriarch Chi, and Hard Work. Those being the best characters in the game that are plug and play viable. That you can put them into just about any team and they work great um from there we get on to tier two tier two in my opinion are characters that need other that are really good but they really kind of need other characters to do well um or they need different comp team comp uh compositions and that sort of stuff and it gets a little it gets a little tough at tier two because when we're talking about tier two characters we're talking about characters that do a lot of damage or they do well on a team and so what i'm going to do here when we're talking about tier two is kind of break these down into defenders healers um and dps right so when you're looking at it's it's kind of hard to do because when you're looking at my lineup right here, right, I have every character in the game lo unlocked. There's no doubt about that, right? However, when we look at the defenders, all right, and I've kind of done this before, but when we're looking at defenders, right, we want to look at, you know, what is the next, what is tier two? Well, tier two characters can't necessarily be broken down into, well, this tank's good or this tank's bad because frankly they all have good abilities i think little baddie here is probably quite good but i haven't i haven't invested into her she looks good on paper um but is she as good as salvador and or kinley even though with the with the buffs decreases and that sort of stuff with nighty l coming in and ripping buffs off of people i think that kinley and and uh salvador are still very good characters however i think that the, you know as as tanks they're tier two primarily because they don't plug and play as well um, as others kinley i think can be plugged and played but i think that you really want to run him with patriarch chi when he's by himself he doesn't have his he's not as good as he would be when he has patriarch chi and that's kind of what makes him a tier two character um, his taunt of course you know, is a, he gains taunt and dodge increase for two turns, and dodge increase has been lowered from 30 to 20 percent. Uh, recovers 25 percent health, that's really awesome. Um, and then you're talking about his spiritual recovery, he has 12 percent health at the start of his turn. Well, gains 20 percent health at the start of his turn, really good. He mean, by himself, he seems to do pre he, he's doing all right now. He was before the nerf a top tier character he was a tank you could throw in by himself and he would do very very well he would dodge and dodge and dodge now with the nerf he doesn't seem to dodge as much uh he 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 can recover his own health but he can't he can't use he can't uh counter attack without kara trump guard can and that's what makes the difference in my mind between Trumgar being a top tier one character and Kinley being a tier two character is the is that really is the ability to be able to cast counter attack on himself. The fact that Trumgar can can counter attack and Kinley cannot simply by his own kit. Right. Yes, he can heal himself, but so can Trumgar. Do you see? Do you see? That's how. That's really the differences between tier one and tier two characters. All right, Salvador. Salvador is awesome. He can cast. He can cast a. You know, he can take physical armor. You know, whoops, this is the wrong one. I apologize. It's his steel shell ability. At he can first turn steel shell for two turns steel shell decreases all damage taken by 90 percent and he gains debuff immunity for two turns a 50 percent chance of debuff immunity for two turns the reason why he is not as good um as a trumgar or the other one is he relies on his taunt he can taunt first turn he can he can do that um he can go ahead and attack first turn and taunt, but he cannot taunt first turn by himself or use steel shell. Right? If they were one ability, if it were one ability taunt and steel shell at the same time, then he'd be he'd be the best tank in the game. 
However, he needs Hera. And this is and this is why he is a tier 2 character cuz he needs someone else to make his mechanic work. Right? Because he needs someone else that puts him in tier 2. All right. So when we look at Hera, Hera's leadership ability, that means that they have to be together. It allows for pride tanks to taunt for two turns when the battle starts. All right. And all right. And so that's and that's the way that works. If we go all the way down here, right? When the battle starts, pride fighters gain increased damage for two turns. Uh pride healers textures and gain uh uh, you know, invisibility for two turns. That's all really good. Uh, but you have to have Hera for Salvador to taunt first turn. Otherwise, you're choosing between either taunting with him or using steel, sh you know, his steel shell ability. And why would you want to do that? Additionally, if we want to talk about MVP, Nightiel, she can just simply remove the taunt from Salvador right away. All right. But because of the because of the other uh, because of the stealth mechanics that Hera has, it makes it so you still have to hit him. So still shell is the way to go right there off the bat. So, but the two of them have to exist together. They, you know, and without that, um, it makes it so there she's not as viable. Other two other tier two characters such as Venomate. Venomate is another typical tier two character who is good but he shines because of kara kara is on the battlefield he receives buffs he receives damage up buffs right he gains haste because of kara all right he does a good bit of damage no there's no doubt about that he does good damage but he does so much more when he's in there with kara you don't see him running around without kara because Kara gives him so much more damage because of his ability. And he gives her damage, but not nearly as much as what she gives. And so that's what makes him a two tier, tier two character. He needs Kara to be good by himself. He, he's good, but he's not tier one. So let's move on to other characters. It's going to get a little iffy. Um, like, I believe Xantara here, or Lunch as I like to call her, she is i think she's a tier two healer and the reason why she's a tier two healer is because she has she has to hurt herself to heal right she sacrificed 25 percent of her max health to heal 500 percent of her magic damage right at max level because she has to heal her hurt herself to heal right she it puts herself at a disadvantage you can attack her and then she can't heal herself she can use the kiss of death but it gives her it gives her only you know gives her healing back i mean she's a good character don't get me wrong i mean like she's if you don't have soleus this is who you should be using as your healer she has the ability to restore turns uh abilities one, restore one turn uh of a random uh ability at the start of turn restore one turn of a random ability of a random to my life. so i mean she's it's really, really good. She can sit there and give you back. She heals on her basic, uh, two hundred percent of the magic damage, magic, dam magic damage, and one hundred percent of damage dealt is returned to healing to the lowest health enemy. I mean, she's a good healer, but she only does five hundred percent of her magic damage and hurts herself to do so. And then, of course, she can deal damage, but and she gains that back. But it tends to make it's not the same as. Solius, who's doing all these buffs and doesn't have to hurt himself at all and cause cause somebody else to assist i mean you can see how if you don't have Solius, this is your healing mvp she is phenomenal however if you have Solius, she can be put on the back burner she's a great healer she's really good for the raids all right she for the most part can be a plug and play character what makes her tier two in my mind is the fact that she hurts herself to heal nobody else has to do that um she can heal herself and she can deal damage but it's it's a tough one so let's look at some other let's look at another tier two uh characters um revel lover i believe is a tier two character and snorri we're going to talk about both of them they they synergize very well with themselves he uh 
the difference with him is that he casts bleed for two turns onto people, or you know, all right, he can inflict bleed for two turns on his basic. He does extra, he has 240%. He's got an AoE that hits everybody, which is really good. If you're doing AoE, being able to hit everybody is really good. Deals 400%. And if the target is bleeding, recovers 20, 75% turn meter. Really, really, really good. Um, and then, of course, he deals 20% more damage for each stack of bleed, uh, of bleeding on the enemies. And so that's really, really good. But what makes him really, really shine is Snorri. Snorri can put bleed, and it, that's that's huge. If Snorri can place bleed down um, on, on everybody with his whirlwind attack. So when you put these two together, just using Revel by himself, he does good. But when you put him with Snorri, he becomes phenomenal. But because of that, because of the need for Snorri to be able to put bleed on people, for him to be really good, that's what makes him a tier 2. Snorri is also, I believe, a tier 2 character um, because he doesn't necessarily need someone else to be viable with him. Um, however, he tends to be kind of weak. He's got low, low bit of health and... He, his berserker stance he only gains stuff uh, when he's out of berserker stance and there's no real reason to flip him in and out of berserker stance uh, when he gains 40 percent speed when he's in it at least not in my opinion maybe i'm wrong but i think that by himself he's a really good character but he tends to be a little squishy uh, because he's squishy and because there are other characters who do so much more than just damage, he doesn't provide any other things to any of the healers. Um, he doesn't provide buffs for anyone else. It's just all on his own. He's just a big damage dealer. That puts him in the tier 2 category because he's not giving to other people, but he's also not really, uh, you know, he's not taking anything away either, but he just isn't as plug and play uh, friendly he does much better with a soleus lead um, where he can survive and that sort of stuff if you pair him up with if you pair him up with freezard it makes him really good um because freezard gives him some abilities story gains you know magic armor and tenacity while he's not in berserk stance which makes him tougher towards the be towards the end uh towards the beginning of the battle before you hit your berserk and of course when you hit berserk he does he does crazy things uh gains 25 percent crit chance and 40 speed and then it can't be prevented or removed using a can will cancel it but i don't see what the point of using it um you know getting rid of it would be and so once you get rid of it you lose these abilities here the passive dragon hunter abilities so all right Let's see here. Um, all right, some other tier two, other tier two characters. Corella, I believe, is a tier two. Some people are probably going to say that she's a tier one character, and she might be. Uh, I won't. I won't lie. I think that she's probably a tier two character, and the reason. For the reason why I think that she's a tier two character at the present moment is that. While she has great utility for countering tanks, right, by putting them in Viz, she doesn't really do anything else, right? Yes, she she has these, um, you know, allied defenders. Defenders get tenacity increase for two turns. If there's three healers, all right, they, the, the healers get cheat, cheat death for one turn. And if the three allied tacticians, all three allies gain haste for one turn. And if there are three warriors, they all gain counterattack for one turn. All right that's that's cool i mean don't get me wrong it's i mean it, it it's certainly awesome if you can put everything up she might be really good to be able to add to like the three warrior event if you have her maxed out um but she's situational right she's there to use this ability to gain invisibility on a tank for two turns and then that's great all right, but Nightiel does that. Nightiel does that and does way more damage than she does. And so I, she can remove, I mean, Nightiel can do it. It's, but you know, Nightiel, of course, it's, it's situational with Nightiel and it's RNG dependent. And I know with her, she can do it. 
um, and you have control that does make this better, but what else is she going to do for the team? All right. It's kind of situational. You're going to have to stack your team with mages. Or you're going to have to stack your team with healers or ta stack your team with warriors or tacticians and that sort of stuff. And that might actually end up leading you out, uh, leading you into a stray. Otherwise, you're just not getting the full effect of that ability. Even if even her reflection, right? The reflection summons a hero at 70% of shields and 70% of damage and 75% of speed. It's kind of cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's cool. i just not sure it's 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 better than the others right and so that's kind of where i'm at um i think that it's probably i probably think she's a tier two character maybe she's not maybe she's a tier one i'd love to hear arguments about that or you know just you know tell me what you think um but i think that she's more of a tier two character uh so let's go through here as well i think those are all the tier two um characters at the moment um I know there's there's probably going to be some debate um about the tier two or tier three, but once again let's let's go just recap them real quick. Tier two characters are characters that are good but need other people to be good. Um Venomate, uh Revel Snorri, uh Salvador and Hera, uh Xantara, be, right? She doesn't necessarily need somebody else to be good, and she might be a tier one character if it wasn't for the fact that you have Solius who does so much more than her. And then uh you know, Ken Lee, obviously, uh as well. Some people are gonna be like, well, what about Rantha? What about Corker? What about Mar? What about Mortha? Um Right. I think that those characters, those characters are further down the list. One other character that I forget to mention that is also a tier, uh, a tier two character. It might even be a tier one character is puncher face. Puncher face, as you can see, I have, <laughs> I have him, but I don't haven't unlocked him. All right. This ability here, earthquake 210% physical damage to all enemies and flicks taunt for two turns. I've seen this in action. This will, this can make sure pop everybody out of stealth. This can put taunt on everyone, right? My understanding is he does really good damage. Um, and he can be plugged and played. However, because I don't have him and I haven't been able to experience him, I think I'm going to put him at tier two. And the reason why is I think that he is currently not used. Um, as you can see, his popularity is 29%. Uh, I've seen people use him. I have people in my guild who enjoy him, and I think he does very well. But... And this isn't a popularity contest. This is more about what I think the characters can do or do do. Um, yeah, I said do do. But they they do. What he does is this is what he can do. He can inflict the taunt and that can allow you to get everybody out of stealth and allow you to control the battlefield. If you have resources to bump him up, I think that you can find he's a good plug and play character. I just don't think he's as good as the top echelon the upper echelon of the characters so that's why he's a tier two character if i missed anything please let me know these are the list of two up to the tier two characters um at the present moment if you have any questions please drop them in the comments comments down below if you are new around here hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notifications bell so you don't miss a thing and we'll see you next time when gaming and the law intersect